We're joined by Tadeusz Kuczynski, who is the Minister of Finance and the Minister of Development Funds and Regional Policy, which are actually two separate ministries. Minister Kuczynski, thank you very much for joining us. I think Richard will just have an introductory question uh, to start with. Hello, Minister. Thanks very much for joining us. Um, last time we met, obviously, we were looking forward um, this year to celebrating 30 years of continuous growth for Poland. Obviously, a lot of challenges since then globally um, in terms of the health crisis. So. How do you see the prospects for the economy in, in 2021? Yes, uh, last time I talked, we were basically in a different universe. Uh, in 2019, uh, we reduced uh, over three years, uh, so 2017 to 2019, the, the, the public debt by 8%. Uh, we came uh, into this year with the first balanced budget since 1989. And here we are at, uh, at the end of the year, we're going to have the biggest deficit in, the, in our 30 years history, our, biggest, uh, our first recession. Um, so, so how things have just totally changed. Um, 2021, I think, uh, uh, we'll be going, uh, we're, we're going back on our normal tracks and, uh, and uh, re rebuilding uh, the, the economy. So, so I'm quite uh, confident that uh, uh, we've managed to understand how to cope with the uh, pandemic. Uh, we've let lessons have been learned, but also time is doing its, 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 uh, its, its uh, work that... Uh, First of all, the number of people being uh, infected is increasing. We have about 20 to 30,000 per day, which means that uh, a significant portion of the uh, uh, population will have had the virus within the next six months. So we'll have uh, so the uh, immunity from that point of view, but also the, the vaccine, there's a number of vaccines coming on the market. So hopefully by the uh, midsummer that... Uh, We'll, we'll be talking about the past uh, when it comes to the, uh, the, the virus and the uh, economic consequences. Minister, just in terms of the uh, international investment environment, um, and particularly obviously looking at, at real estate and infrastructure investment, um, how do you see that for, for Poland going forward? Uh, are you positive in terms of the outlook? Well, I'm, I'm positive. Uh, first of all, the, the, the economy, how it's growing, I think it's... it's uh, uh, we're, we're forecast to have a 4.6% uh, recession. That's coming from the Ministry of Finance. And obviously, we have to be very conservative because that's the limit. Uh, all the, uh, uh, all the uh, public finances are built on that. So we can't uh, uh, be too, too, uh, too, too optimistic. We have to be relatively conservative. And so 4.6%. And that's a relatively uh, a low uh, uh, recession for Europe. I think only one or two countries are anywhere close to us. The average is about 9% for this year. And for next year, we're forecasting a 4% 4, 4 growth. So around about this time next year, so, so towards the end of the year, we should have zeroed off uh, the, the, uh, the uh, effects of the pandemic. Now, to put it, maybe to, uh, easier to put it, this year we're going to uh, uh, con con uh, contract by 4.6%. Last year we expanded by 46 So we're just going back two years. Now, the average for the EU is going back five years. Uh, for France, it's 10 years. And God bless the Italians, they're going back 25 years. So that's put to put the uh, Polish uh, economy into perspective. So uh, we'll be one of the first economies which will be uh, back on track, uh, back into a positive territory. Uh, and hopefully we'll uh, benefit uh, from, the, from the, the change that we uh, 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 expect to have uh, in, the, in the global supply supply. Uh, change that uh, Poland will be one of the winners. Now, some of the uh, 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 sectors that we're hoping to, to gain, of course, is pharmacy, IT, uh, but also shared services. So we're, we're one of the leaders in shared services, and shared services will continue to uh, uh, um, push uh, the, the real estate market uh, for, for us, uh, which uh, has done over the last uh, 15 years. Uh, most of the cities, uh, because of the, the demand for new office space, the good quality jobs, so people uh, are buying houses and flats, uh, uh, is, uh, de has developed the, uh, the, the real estate side. Also, the manufacturing, that's an interesting one. Poland, I think, and I think the Czech Republic were the only two countries which uh, reported uh, uh, positive uh, manuf uh, 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 manufacturing, manufacturing production index uh, this, this, this month. So, so it shows that manufacturing in Poland is also uh, uh, coming out of the pand uh, uh, out of recession very, very quickly, which will also drive the real estate. So uh, I think uh, uh, the real estate will be positive. Of course, we have to re uh, remember 
will the real real estate post pandemic be the same real estate as pre pandemic? Uh, uh, we had in Poland uh, the, uh, the 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 office space, uh, the boom in office space, etc. But uh, uh, now with uh, most companies, which even six nine months ago, which uh, we were thought was not possible, now with working uh, from home. Uh, there's a lot of discussion uh, about the office space. Uh, is the office space, uh, the amount required is not going to be a, a, a different type of requirement for real estate. So this is something uh, which uh, we'll see if it's the, the, one of the fallouts of the pandemic will be uh, real estate will change, IT will change and the medical sector will change. We talked to um, some key figures in the real estate market, um, both Polish and international, to ask them what's on their minds, what questions they would want to ask. So I have a few um, from them. First of all, why has the real estate industry been excluded from the COVID, from the COVID rescue funds um, since COVID has affected revenue streams? Um, obviously, of landlords, you look at the retail sector, for example, shopping centres, they're suffering hard and they're not um, being part of the COVID rescue funds. Why is that? My understanding of shopping malls is that uh, uh, the, they have uh, leases uh, with, with, uh, with their tenants and uh, whether the tenants have business or not, they still get uh, income uh, because that's something that's being brought up by the shops themselves. But uh, the, the, the shops, uh, we've closed down the shops. Uh, uh, the customers can't go into the shops to, to, to buy goods and services. Um, but they still have to pay their, their rent. So uh, we, we, uh, we, we need to analyze this a bit more that uh, where, what really is happening is uh, are the galleries having a problem uh, uh, because uh, they're not having the income. My understanding is they have the income um, or is it the shops uh, having a problem that they're having to pay lease without, uh, without uh, the uh, re retail income. Um, so there's no, no, no specific strategy against shopping malls or anything like that. It's, it's just part of the fallout. And uh, uh, perhaps uh, they've, they've dropped between two stalls for some reason. Uh, that if there is a problem, they haven't uh, uh, made, the, made uh, us aware of that. And so I'd be delighted to, for them to, to, to uh, make contact with us and to give us their side of the story and see what we can do. They have, of course, had benefit because quite often, of course, the, uh, the real estate is, is uh, leveraged. And the, and the banks have actually uh, 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 given uh, credit holidays, etc. So they have had benefit there. But if there are cases of, uh, that, that we're missing. And uh, we're delighted that something which I'm trying to do in the Ministry of Finance has changed the way we work. The Ministry of Finance is not perceived as uh, a ministry which is there to take, uh, take in uh, a tax, but really that we're working for the population and uh, we're helping the population. So we, do, we have a, a regular dialogue with business and uh, we listen to business. In fact, most of the, uh, the, the financial shields that we have implemented in Poland have been uh, from, uh, from discussions with business. The business has told us what, uh, what is required. It's not uh, us as the civil servants have, de have decided. So uh, it's, uh, if there is a problem on the, on the, uh, on, on the shopping, front, on the shopping ga gallery front, uh, shopping mall, then uh, I invite people to, to let me know and let's see what we can do. The second question is about, um, very familiar question about the REIT legislation, real estate investment trusts. As you know, this comes up a lot. Um, Poland is well behind, um, you know, all other countries on this. Um, and the reason seems so clearly beneficial that you have um, local capital, that it brings liquidity, it allows the average man, woman, company on the street to invest. It means local projects, which might not ordinarily um, go ahead with international financing can get local financing. And of course, you know, in hard times when um, international capital could potentially um, go elsewhere, the local capital stays. You know, why, why is nothing moving forward? Or more, more importantly, what are the plans for REITs going forward? Is something going to happen? I think so. A very good question. Uh, thank you for that. I think we're developing the, the, the Polish capital market. Uh, we, we have a strategy for that, uh, a plan potentially in place, uh, who's actually developing that. I think uh, REITs will be part of that. Uh, uh, we, we shall be actively looking at REITs. Uh, uh, we can see that there's a significant uh, amount of liquidity in the Polish uh, market, uh, uh, at the moment, uh, it's being uh, drawn into uh, government bonds. If, uh, 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 I think 80% of our financing of uh, Polish debt is actually coming from the Polish market. So, uh, and, the, and the retail uh, sector is, is, a, is, a, is a, a, a prime investor at the moment, so one of the major investors. So, obviously, there's a lot of funds and people are chasing good uh, uh, 
uh, opportunities. A lot of uh, um, people and a lot of small companies which I talk to are looking at investment opportunities and they seem to be uh, uh, investing in, in, in property, so buying uh, the flats, apartments and holiday homes, which they then rent out. So, uh, so they're going to that business. So obviously, uh, it's a market that uh, the, there's a demand there uh, uh, and not, uh, not sufficient uh, supply. So I think REITs is uh, obviously something which we should be looking at to see if we can uh, 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 include that in the uh, uh, number of uh, products that we have for, to increase the capital markets uh, in, in Poland. Is, is there good will towards REITs um, from the government? Because it doesn't seem to be the case. I don't think there's bad will, that's for sure. Uh, it, it's really, again, something that uh, there's so many other things on our topic at the moment, on, on our plate at the moment, that nobody's actively looking about. And it's, it's, uh, uh, um, it's an important topic, but it's, it's not the top of agenda. And perhaps it should become the top of agenda. Again, it's the industry. If it makes sufficient noise, then things uh, go on the top of the agenda. So I... Uh, advise the industry to, to make sufficient noise and uh, then we'll be uh, looking at it uh, more, more, more quickly. This is a question about taxation that obviously in international investors um, need stability and they don't like surprises. Um, and then there's a plan for the amendment to the Act on Corporate Income Tax, which is coming into force on May 2021, which I understand means that there will be um, double taxation. So the taxation of a limited partnerships um, in terms of corporate income tax, but also on uh, dividends. So effectively, as I understand it, there will be double taxation going up from around 19 or so percent to around 35 percent. And please correct me if I'm wrong on that, but there is a lot of concern on the real estate market about that. Okay, it's, it's, well, first of all, uh, we have no plans in Poland to increase taxes. So, so uh, 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 funding of our uh, the public debt and uh, uh, going forward would not be uh, from uh, increasing taxes. Um, the, the tax uh, that you're talking about is not a new tax. It's that we're applying tax to, to, these, uh, to these companies uh, because an operation is formed where you have a limited company, which uh, you have, uh, under a limited company, you have to pay corporate tax. And then when you get the dividend, uh, you, you, uh, you, you pay your personal income tax. Now, what's happened in Poland uh, with these, uh, uh, they're called commanditowe in Poland uh, companies, that they're aimed at uh, uh, having an investor who is a passive investor uh, uh, and doesn't take any responsibility for the uh, liabilities of the company. And what suddenly happened in Poland is that, uh, and he doesn't pay tax, is that in that, uh, and, the other, and the other investor obviously uh, has, uh, um, uh, uh, pays taxes, we, we've suddenly found that uh, a lot of uh, tax advisors are telling people, well, put in as one of the investors a limited company, which then limits your, uh, uh, your liability, uh, uh, and don't give him 50% uh, uh, of the uh, profits, but just give him 1% of the profits. So it's really a tax evasion tool. And so we're, we're really clamping down on tax evasion because we think uh, with a recession and going forward, it's very, very important that everybody has a level playing field. So we can't allow, uh, if, if you have a, a limited company, you're paying taxes, you're paying corporate tax, you're paying uh, private uh, personal income tax. But if you do some financial engineering, you're evading tax, they're taking advantage. That's, uh, that's unfair for the market. And that's basically what we're doing, is we're closing down that, that uh, loophole. It's something which the OECD has uh, said that uh, uh, five, six years ago, that... Uh, most countries uh, or all countries in Europe should be doing that. And uh, I think most countries already have closed that loophole. It's something that uh, uh, we haven't done so far. We need to do that now. Are you also open to hear from the real estate market why they think it should be differently? Yes, uh, of, of course. So uh, we're, we're, uh, um, uh, we're so, as I said, we're not looking to extract more uh, tax from the, from the market to finance the public uh, debt. Uh, what we're doing is, is trying to uh, uh, level the playing field and to, to show that what we're encouraging companies is to invest in Poland. So we're bringing in from uh, January uh, what the so-called Estonian uh, uh, corporate tax, which basically means if you're investing, you don't pay any corporate tax. And uh, this, this is something that the real estate also should be looking at uh, to see if, if that's not the solution of, uh, to, to, uh, uh, for them to increase the amount of investment uh, uh, and not paying a tax up front. That's interesting, Minister. Um, just, just looking at the um, 
I suppose some of the incentives for international investors to to come into Poland is that both from a <clears throat> I suppose a, a real estate investor as well as an occupier side. Yes, we're, we're, it's a part of the strategy which we haven't yet uh, uh, um, uh, publicised. It will be publicised uh, mid December. Uh, the, the new support for the Polish uh, economy will actually be aimed at international investors to come into Poland, uh, so so that uh, uh, we we already have a lot of uh, uh, products uh, uh, which are good for international investors, like the whole of Poland's investment zone, which uh, we we brought in I think uh, two 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 years ago, two three years ago. Uh, we have uh, various other products uh, uh, like uh, um, the IP uh, IP box. So if you do your search and development in Poland and uh, you, you uh, register your product in Poland, then you only pay 5% corporate tax worldwide forever on that. So there are these products, but we're also uh, uh, going to, I don't want to uh, give out too many secrets at the moment, but we're looking to see, uh, looking to uh, offer as much as possible to international investors to invest in Poland uh, and also for Polish uh, people who live abroad to come back to Poland and to, to, to work here in Poland. So we'll be giving uh, various tax breaks there. We'll be giving tax breaks to companies who will be um, uh, investing not only in, in uh, real estate, uh, uh, but also in uh, by employing, uh, when they employ people, especially key uh, so IT staff, etc., specialists, they'll be able to also have uh, tax breaks there. So I think... Uh, uh, there'll be a, a, a lots of interesting uh, uh, um, benefits for actually uh, uh, investing in Poland. Thanks very much for, for joining us, Minister, um, and also for, for sharing your views um, uh, more generally on the market, but also um, particularly for, for the real estate sector. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you, Mr. Minister. Thank you. Thank you.